We are now honored to welcome the President of the State Senate, our own, the Honorable Shan Tsutsui, as our keynote speaker. And this morning, Senator Tsutsui will speak on the challenges the council members will face as they enter a new term. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Senator Shan Tsutsui. Honorable Council Chair Mateo, Honorable Council Members, distinguished guests, family and friends, good morning and aloha. aloha. I am honored and grateful to be here this morning to deliver a message with hope and optimism as we start the 2011 year. Over the past few years, the primary concern of Maui County residents has been the long and lingering effects of the economic recession on our state, our county, and most of all, our families. Whether the effects of the economic slowdown in one way or another has affected you, be it through furloughs, whether you're a small business owner who saw sales revenues decline, whether you've been laid off, had hours reduced, or asked to take pay cuts, I dare say that no one in our county has been unaffected by our economic situation. And yes, we continue to live in challenging times and many difficult situations remain to be addressed. But today, we are here in search of hope and optimism. And just where will we find this hope and optimism? Well, I believe that we'll find them right here in these council chambers. Assembled before us are nine men and women with backgrounds as diverse as the community that they represent, bearing the talent and more importantly, the desire to help improve the lives of everyone in our county. Maui residents have given you, our newly and re-elected council members, a vote of confidence and the keys to represent them here. You have been chosen to represent everyone, from those who need housing to those who build housing, from the sick to those who care for the sick, from those who enjoy financial independence to those still seeking that independence. You have been entrusted by the voters of our county to represent them all. As American cultural anthropologist Martha, uh, Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. That commitment and partnership will be key moving forward. And speaking of partnerships, your state legislative team pledges to work with you closely on issues that affect all of our residents. We are excited to continue the positive working relationship that has been forged between this county and our state. During the 2010 legislative session, despite a shrinking economy, <coughs> council members worked with us to secure funding for many nonprofits, schools, roads, harbors, irrigation systems, and healthcare centers throughout our county. Council members also fought to preserve our portion of the transient accommodation tax, which is also known as a TAT or the hotel room tax. They worked with our Maui legislative team to convince other members at the legislature that the county's loss of the TAT would be devastating to Maui's public programs and services and could result in an increase in property taxes. A joint effort resulted in the counties keeping their share of the revenues, which ultimately benefited all of us. As we continue to build upon the relationships between the state and the county this legislative session, let us focus on work working collaboratively and not turning against each other or attempting to raid one's coffers in order to make up for financial shortfalls. And if I have anything to say about it, which I believe I do, Maui County will continue to retain its portion of the TAT for years to come. <laughs> Additionally, at the state level, I will support any efforts to improve water infrastructure and storage. Much can be done through state assistance and capital improvement funding for construction, repair and maintenance of new and existing systems for both agricultural and residential needs. Together, we will also build a regional park that will be used for generations to come. By working together, we will build a regional park complex that will be home to numerous soccer, football, baseball, and softball fields. This park will provide space for family recreation and provide ample practice and playing facilities for our young athletes. No longer will the state need to converge on Oahu for state tournaments. With our new facility, we will be able to host hundreds of off-island families and provide a boost to our local businesses. These are just a few examples of how working together, our county will lead the state towards greater prosperity. 
Over the last several years, the state legislature has identified projects that one, provide a great public benefit, and two, provide immediate construction jobs for our local residents. This year, my Maui colleagues and I look forward to securing at least $100 million of these projects, and I will make it my responsibility to make sure that the governor releases these funds immediately. Let us not ever have to wait 24 to 36 months to get these projects moving once approved. On that note, just two weeks ago, I had requested that the governor release $40 million in capital improvement projects, which included $15 million for the expansion of Maui Memorial Medical Center. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank Governor Abercrombie for quickly releasing these funds. Thank you, Governor. While I believe we can certainly find hope and optimism by working together, we can also look at some tangible evidence to support this belief. The recent increase in the revenue projections by the Council on Revenues was based on an increase in consumer spending, double-digit growth in visitor spending, and increased visitor arrivals, all which point to brighter days ahead. Balancing the needs of today with one eye on the future will be critical. We know refusing to fund social programs today will end up costing us more in the future. We know burdening our residents and businesses with excessive taxes and fees may fulfill our immediate need for cash, but slows economic recovery. We know putting our sole focus on tourism as a driver of our economy might make us comfortable today, but does little for the diversified economy that will support generations to come. And finally, we know that putting today's comforts over building our sustainable future in energy and agriculture robs our state and county of its full potential. <laughs> Finally this morning, I would like to leave you all with a story that reminds us that we can do good, we can do well by doing good, and that by working together and helping one another, we can lift each other higher and achieve more. This story revolves around an individual by the name of Sandy Greenberg. Anybody heard of Sandy Greenberg? Okay, good. In his youth, Sandy was a very good student but came from a poor family. And so when he went off to college at Columbia University, he went there on a financial scholarship. And there he met a roommate who was also receiving financial aid at the time. While he was a sophomore at Columbia University in the early 70s, Sandy contracted an eye disease that eventually proved to be glaucoma. But the trouble was it wasn't detected early enough and as a result, he became legally blind. Sandy was determined to continue school but not knowing how he would do it. He was in a very competitive school and his loss of vision prevented, prevented him from being able to read. But something good happened to Sandy. When Sandy lost his eyesight, his roommate decided that he would read to him every night. Imagine a 19-year-old stu college student taking the time to read his roommate's textbooks out loud to him every night knowing that it would take time away from his own studies and from college activities. But luckily for Sandy, his roommate did. And as a result, Sandy went on to graduate with honors. He got a Fulbright scholarship and went off to study at Oxford. He was still quite poor, but had managed to save a few hundred dollars along the way. His roommate, meanwhile, also went to graduate school. And one day, Sandy got a call from him. His for former roommate called him and said, Sandy, you know, I'm really unhappy. I don't like being in graduate school, so I'm not sure if I'm going to continue. Sandy responded by asking, well, what is it that you really want to do? His roommate told him that it reminded him how he had this love for, for singing. And he had a high school friend who played the, played the guitar. And they would really like to try their hand at the music business. But in order to, do, to cut a promo record, they would need $500, and they just didn't have it. So Sandy Greenberg took all of his life savings, nearly $500, and I guess back in the early 70s, that was a lot of money, right, Tony? <laughs> anyway, he took the $500 and sent it to his old roommate. After all, Sandy felt that his roommate had made his life better, and now he had a chance to return the favor. So let us all remember the power of doing good and helping one another. All of us will be faced with challenges and problems throughout our lives. We will have greater success working together and helping one another in times of need. And by the way, Sandy went on to graduate with a PhD from Harvard. He married his high school sweetheart, had three children, was appointed a White House fellow, became a corporate CEO, 
a venture capitalist, and an advisor to the President and the White House. And his roommate, well, you might have heard of him, and I know Tony did. Sandy's roommate was a person by the name of Art Garfunkel. <laughs> and he teamed up with another musician by the name of Paul Simon. That $500 helped him cut a record that was titled The Sounds of Silence. And as you say in show business, the rest was history. <laughs> My hope today as we begin the new year is that we all keep our eyes open for opportunities to help one another. And let's assist this council in turning hope and optimism into positive results. And to our newly and re-elected council members, as you begin your deliberations today, on behalf of all of the residents in Maui County, we wish you the best and thank you for your dedication and commitment to public service. Mahalo and Happy New Year. So did he get his $500 back or what? <laughs>